Hi, this is Justin from Ajar Productions. In this video, I want to help you make better digital magazines. To do that, I've put together five different categories of innovative animation that you can apply to your projects today to make them better, to wow your clients and your bosses. So let's jump right in. The first example is from USC, and they've long created some of my favorite animation examples with N5. Take a look at the animation on this spread. Note how the image in the bottom right is sliced into diagonal parallelograms and it sort of mimics the shape of the architecture on the image of the left. Now this is already a fantastic static design without any movement but what the designer has done is to take the geometric shapes and apply them to the animation, allow the shapes to inform the animation and how the objects enter the page. Let's take a look in slow motion so you can see how these objects move in a way that reflects their shape. And again, on this page, you can see in slow motion, we have the diagonal shape at the bottom and the animation of the gray rectangle and the uh, blue shape. They come in and they, they work with that. And this just has a very natural feeling. It catches the eye and it doesn't look like it came out of a box. It doesn't look like a bunch of presets applied. It looks like a really distinct animation. So in designing both your static layout and then how you apply your animation, think about the shapes and how the viewer's eye moves on the page and how you can accentuate that with animation. You can do that in InDesign by manipulating the motion path directly with your selection tool. This is one of my other favorites from this project. Let's look at the static page first after it's completed the animation. And again, we have diagonals within the shape. And then we have the, the circles with a line in between that sort of play against the sharp edges of the diagonals. And now let's look at how this is animated. So the circles pulling apart it kind of creates this tension. It really feels like the, the page is physically pulled together. And again, that helps it feel like it's not just a generic design where things just appear on page. There's really a, a sense of physics on the page and the shapes are made use of, and the circles pull apart and stop almost as if there's a string between them. Then there's a variation on this page where instead of a line being between the two circles, there's a shape, and that shape mimics the line from the page we were just looking at. So hopefully breaking down the geometry of this project will help you think about the geometry and how you can apply it to the animation in your projects. Now, it's one thing to create animated transitions. N5 has built-in page formats that can, for instance, fade or slide between pages. And of course, InDesign lets us do on-page load animations so we can fade things on the screen. And normally, how we think about those things is how those transitions lead us to the static page. So just like in the design we were looking at, we had all these geometric shapes. And the interesting part it was how they slid on the screen and opened up based on their shape. But, but we basically went from nothing to the static design that we had on screen. Now this Smart Brief project does it a little bit differently. It has a transition that comes on and appears on the screen and then completely goes away and then we see the static design. And it's pretty eye-catching on its own, so it's something to think about. You can create transitions that don't have to stay on screen once your animation is finished. You can use transition animations to bring your viewer's eyes into the screen and get them ready to see what is about to be shown. Here's another one of my longtime favorite transitions from an N5 project. This project has two different tracks. You can go in the scientist track or the engineer track. If you click on the engineer track, before the page changes, the rocket ship from the card on the right shoots up from the card, and then the page transitions. And this little bit of accent just really makes me feel like this project was loved and cared about. And that level of care really makes me want to spend time interacting with the project. Staying with this project for a moment, let's also take a look at the scientist card on the left. So the rocket ship that I just showed breaks the boundary of the card on the right if I click the button. Even as the slide is just sitting here, the bubbles are coming up and crossing the boundary of the card. And there's something about that, again, it, it catches my eye because it does not look cookie cutter and it helps me engage with the project even more. The very opening of this project does this pretty well too when a rocket comes across the screen 
and it seems to interact with the gears to cause them to spin around. So that's something too. It seems like on screen, in different designs, we separate things into boxes. And there's something powerful and eye-catching when something crosses from one of those spaces into another. You can even see the uh, electron paths of the atoms here. Each one has something in it. We've got uh, the symbol up on the right, the gears down on the left. We've got part one uh, down on the bottom right and the robotic arm in the top left. And there's something about that rocket ship crashing through those spaces that really brings me into the project. And it's a great way to get me started and wake me up to pay attention. This project from Dan Marcolina is absolutely brilliant at breaking spaces. So you can see here we've got a vertical line coming down separating two spaces. There's about two-thirds on the right is gray and then one-third on the left is white and it's got the text. We kind of just assume that those spaces are, are separate. Uh, but Dan sort of breaks that space by having the woman's hands reach across the line. And again, there's something about that that really catches our eye, and he does it with movement. In this case, he's using an image sequence. So if you export an image sequence from Photoshop, for example, as PNGs, they can have transparency. And you can take advantage of that transparency to cross borders and really catch the viewer's eye. And he's also playing around with the border of the iPad itself. So the woman both seems to be inside the iPad and coming outside of it, and it creates this really cool 3D effect. Same with the water coming out of the iPad on this slide, and then we have birds come flying out. Very similar. So think about how you can break the borders within your design to engage your readers. You can also use animation to catch people's attention in order to promote them to interact with the project. So previously I'd mentioned this rocket ship. Once the rocket ship comes past, there's a start button. And this one's pretty obvious, but nonetheless it's effective. The button has a kind of a wiggling grow animation. It's kind of saying, hey, I'm here, click me. There's a more subtle version of that in the UNESCO project. It's an animation right next to the scroll bar indicating that this item scrolls. They could have just used a static icon to indicate that this was scrollable, but there's something about this animation that both catches our eye and tells us what this does because of the, the changing size of that white bar. You could also make your animation much more engaging by making it interactive. This project was designed as a kiosk app. You can see how the kiosk worked. People interacted with the app, which was an iPad, sitting inside of that display and they would swipe with their finger and here I have a recording in the iPad simulator and I'm doing the swipe with my mouse so it's a little bit more clumsy but you still get the idea as I swipe from right to left the animation plays through and it's a lot more interesting than if the animation just played on its own by scrolling through this one we move forward through a star field and it has this wonderful 3d effect of moving through space Here's another cool idea that combines multiple animations into one. So first I'm swiping and it's opening up this astronomy book and then out from the astronomy book pops the, uh, the constellation of stars. And this effect is also all done with the N5 image sequence interactive widget. The only difference is that it's made swipeable by checking that option. If you want to see more on creating an image sequence, check out this course on Ajar Academy. It shows you how to make a 3D swipeable rotating image sequence. And if you want to see more about doing animation and interactivity together, check out this other course on Ajar Academy by Keith Gilbert. Before I go, I want to leave you with one bonus animation technique, and that's going from grayscale to color. It's pretty simple. You can do it with two different images in InDesign and simply fade out the black and white image, or you could do it with an image sequence. You could have multiple layers of color that fade in one at a time. It's a pretty simple thing to accomplish, but it brings the viewer into the publication to get started. And one more example from a spread in the USC annual report. This item comes on, fades in almost in layers, similar to the grayscale to color transition. So you can think about building up the transparency of items, like break them apart, make each one transparent instead of just fading the whole thing on at once. So I hope you found a breakout of these techniques helpful, and hopefully you're able to apply them to your projects to great success. 
Please like the video if you did find it helpful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. And I hope to see you in another one soon.